Welcome back to ABIT Academy. And if you are new, a very warm welcome to you. This channel is where you will find learning technical and IT skills is made fun and easy. In this video, we will be delving deeper into working with paragraphs. Let's not delay any further. Just hit those like and subscribe buttons to help me out and we'll get started. In a Word document, a paragraph is the part of text between two paragraph marks. To create a new paragraph, all you need to do is press the Enter key. If you want to see these non-printable symbols in your document, just go to the Home tab and click on the Show Hide button. This will show you all the non-printable symbols, including paragraph marks, which indicate the limits of the paragraphs. Now, let's say you want to merge two paragraphs together. This is super easy to do. All you need to do is delete the paragraph mark symbol between the two paragraphs. This will merge the two paragraphs into one, and that's it. Paragraphs are a fundamental element in any Word document, and with these simple steps, you can create, view, and modify them with ease. Sometimes you may want to wrap text without creating a new paragraph. In these cases, you can use a line break. This function is especially useful if you're using numbered lists and you want to wrap the text without creating a new bullet point. To insert a line break, simply press the shift and enter keys simultaneously. Alternatively, you can go to the page setup group in the layout tab and click on breaks and then select text wrapping. In both cases, all the text that you type will restart from the following line. If you want to see the hidden characters, such as the line break symbol, simply click on the show slash hide button on the standard toolbar. The line break symbol is represented by an arrow pointing to the left. To delete a line break, you can simply delete the symbol itself. Alternatively, if you don't want to see the hidden characters, you can press the delete key from the first space at the end of the line, and that's it. Line breaks are a handy feature that can make your documents look more professional and polished. Let's talk about how to make your text easier to read by using indents and alignment. Have you ever tried to make your text look more organized by using spaces to create an indent or alignment? It may look good at first, but as you continue to type, it quickly becomes a mess. Plus, it's time consuming to manually create spaces for indents and alignment. Fortunately, Word has built-in functions that make this process much more efficient. Let's start with indents. An indent is a blank space between the margin and the beginning of a line of text. To add an indent, select the paragraph or text you want to modify, then click on the small arrow next to the paragraph group in the Home tab. This will open the paragraph dialog box. From there, you can adjust the indent size in the special box. You can also set indents for the first line, the whole paragraph, or both. Notice the review box, which gives you an idea of what your chosen setting will look like. Once you're done, click OK and voila, your text now has a clean, professional look. Next up is alignment. Alignment refers to the way text is positioned on a page. There are four types of alignment, left, right, center, and justified. Left alignment is the default setting in Word, and it aligns text to the left margin. Center alignment centers the text between the margins. Right alignment aligns text to the right margin. Justified alignment aligns text to both the left and right margins, creating a clean straight edge on both sides of the paragraph. To adjust alignment, simply select the paragraph or text you want to modify, then click on the appropriate alignment button in the Home tab. Remember, using indents and alignment can help your text look more organized and professional. So, say goodbye to those pesky spaces and hello to the built-in functions in Word. If you want even more control over your text alignment, you can open the paragraph window by clicking on the arrow located at the bottom of the group paragraph of the Home tab. From there, click on the arrow on the right of the Align field to choose from the alignment types. As before, you can align your text to the left, center, right, or justify your text by adding spaces between words. It's important to note that justified alignment is particularly useful when working with large blocks of text, such as in a newspaper or magazine article. By justifying your text, it will create clean, straight edges on both the left and right side of your text. Indenting a paragraph can help make your document look more professional and easier to read. 
In the paragraph dialog box, accessible by clicking the arrow in the paragraph section of the Home tab, we can set the value of left and right indent in centimetres or millimetres. This will move the entire paragraph to the right or left. To see a preview of the changes, we can look at the preview section at the bottom of the dialog box. Once we're happy with our choices, we can click on the OK button to apply the changes. We can also use the ruler to set indents. To access the ruler, we need to go to the View tab and click on the ruler box. The white area of the ruler is the text area and the shaded area is the page margin. To modify the indent, we can click and drag the cursors on the ruler. If we drag the downward facing triangle to the left of the ruler, we can set the indent for the first line of the paragraph. If we drag the upward facing triangle to the left of the ruler, we can set the hanging indent for the first line. We can also use the rectangle under the upward facing triangle to align the entire paragraph to the left. To set the indent for the right margin, we can use the upward facing triangle to the right of the ruler. Alternatively, we can use the increase or decrease indent buttons located in the paragraph group on the Home tab. Remember that these commands will be effective on the current paragraph or other already selected paragraphs. Don't forget that indenting paragraphs can help make your document look more polished and professional. Now we're going to talk about tabs and how you can use them to put your document data into a column of set distance from the document margin. Tabs can be really useful, especially when you're working with tables or when you want to align text in columns. After you set up the tabs, it's possible to move from one column to another by pressing the tab key located to the left of the keyboard and usually represented by two arrows. You can set up tabs from the paragraph window or with the ruler. To set up tabs from the paragraph window, you can open it by clicking on the key located on the bottom of the group paragraph, which is present in the home and layout tabs. Once you have the paragraph window open, click on the tabs button and a window will open where you can insert the first value of tab in the field. Tab stop position and then click on set. Repeat the same procedure according to the number of tabs you want to insert and at the end click on OK. You can also choose to set the tab to the left, center, to right or decimal from the same window, which determines the consequent text's alignment. I will stick with the basic functionality for now, but once you have an understanding of how to use tabs, you may want to revisit these options to see what impact they have on your document. You'll see on the top on the ruler some black bars which indicate the tab points. Let's walk through an example of using basic tabs. Take a look at the document on the screen. You'll notice I have three columns. I have created these columns using tabs. Let's start with a blank document and recreate the layout you just saw. Open the paragraphs window as before and click the tabs button in the bottom left. My first column will be on the left margin of the page, so I don't need to explicitly list this one. It's columns two and three that I need to set tabs for. So my first tab that I need to set, we will say, is at five. This measurement is from the left margin. This will make more sense when we look at using the ruler in a minute. Once you enter the value, remember to click set. My second tab will be for my third column, which will be at 10 from the left margin. With these entered, click OK. Now I can enter the first item in the first column. In this case, I just had column one. Now with that entered, I can hit the tab key, which you can see has jumped the cursor across the page a little. Now type in column two and hit tab again to move to the final position where I will enter column three. I will do one more line so you fully see the effect. Hit enter to move to line two. I'm already in position for column one. Let's type apple here. Tab to move to the next position and type in pear. Tab once more and type orange. If you would like to complete the rest of the document, then the next line had the values 1, 2 and 3. Next row had Ford, Kia and Toyota. And the final line consisted of pen, pencil and crayon. To set tabs using the ruler, you can choose various types of tab by pressing on the little icon L, which is located on the top left of the document. By pressing on it, the icon will be transformed according to the type of tab you want to insert. There are four types of tabs you can choose from either from the L icon or from the tabs window. The left aligned tab, represented by a left facing triangle. The text will be placed to the right of the tab point. 
the center aligned tab represented by a double sided triangle. The text will be placed in the center of the tab point, the right aligned tab represented by a right facing triangle. The text will be placed to the left of the tab point, the decimal aligned tab represented by a dot and a comma. The text before the comma will be placed to the left of the tab point and the text that follows the comma will be placed to the right. This is useful when you want to put in column decimal numbers. After you set up the tabs to align them to text, it's necessary to put the cursor in front of the text and then press the tab key to align the text to the desired tab. To delete tabs, you can use the window paragraph or the ruler. In the first case, once you open the window paragraph, click on the tabs key, and then by clicking on the clear key, you will delete only the highlighted tab. In the field tab stop position, by clicking on clear all, you will delete all the tabs. If you prefer to use the ruler, you can drag the tab symbol you want to delete, just drag it onto the document. You'll notice it only affects the line or row where the cursor is located. If you want it to apply to more rows, just highlight the desired rows or even the whole document before dragging the symbol. So that's it for tabs. They're a really useful tool to have in your word processing arsenal. And once you get the hang of them, you'll wonder how you ever managed without them. Let us talk about how to improve the appearance and readability of your documents by leaving a blank line between paragraphs. You might be tempted to manually insert blank spaces with the enter key, but that's not the best way to go about it. Instead, in most word processing programs, you can easily add space between paragraphs using the paragraph spacing feature. This allows you to add a consistent amount of space between every paragraph in your document, making it look more organized and professional. To do this, select the paragraphs you want to add space between or put your cursor where you want to start adding space. Then look for the paragraph spacing option in the home or layout tab usually located next to the line spacing option. By default, this feature is usually set to add eight points of space after each paragraph. You can adjust the amount of space by opening the paragraph dialog box from the paragraph section on the home or layout tabs as before, and then changing the values in the before and after boxes. Remember to check the preview box to get an idea of what effect your setting will have on the document. Once you've made your selection, the spacing will automatically be applied to the selected paragraphs or to the paragraph your cursor is in. And that's it. With just a few clicks, you can easily add consistent spacing between your paragraphs, making your document look more polished and professional. Avoid manually adding spaces with the Enter key and instead use this simple formatting feature to save time and create a more visually appealing document. Let's investigate the idea of changing the spacing between lines of text. To modify a line of a document, you'll need to select it first. If you want to apply the new line to the entire text, just select the entire document. Then open the paragraph dialog box. In the field line spacing, you can press on the arrow to open a menu with various types of line spacing, single, one and a half lines, double at least exactly, and multiples. In the preview box, you can observe the changes as you choose the desired line spacing. You can even set the precise value with an integer or decimal, such as 2 inches or 1.6 inches, etc., by entering it in the field value. Once you've made your selection, just click on OK. And that's it. Now you know how to change the space before and after a paragraph, as well as modify the line spacing. Remember, making these changes can really help to improve the overall look and feel of your document, so go ahead and give it a try. Lists are great for organizing information and making it easy to read. With Word, you can create different types of lists with different types of points, making your document look more professional and well-structured. To create a bulleted list, go to the paragraph group in the Home tab and click on the bullet button. By clicking on the arrow located near the button, you can choose from a variety of bullet point styles. If you want to create a numbered list, click on the numbered list button instead. By clicking on the arrow near the button, you can choose between different types of numbering such as Arabic and Roman numerals, uppercase or lowercase letters. Once you've selected the type of list you want to create, every time you press the enter key, Word will automatically format the new paragraph with the appropriate bullet or number. If you want to return to normal text, 
simply click on the list button again or press the enter key twice. If you want to create a list with sublevels, click on the multi level list button. This feature allows you to create a hierarchical list with different levels of indentation. To move to the next level in the list, first hit enter, which will create a new number as last entry, but if you hit the tab key, it will create a new sublevel. Once you are done with the sublevel and you want to move back up to the parent level, from the new line, just hit enter. Each time you do this, it will move you back up one level until you are at the overall top level, and hitting enter one more time ends the list. Lists are a great way to organize your content and make your document look more professional. Give them a try in your next document. Now we'll be learning about borders and shading and how you can use them to make your documents more appealing. So borders and shadings are some of the amazing features that Word offers. To give a border to a document, first, you need to select the text you intend to give a border. Then click on the arrow located near the borders key. From the scroll down menu, select the last option, Borders and Shading. A window will appear composed of three tabs. In the tab Borders, you will find various types of border settings to the left. In the center, options to change the style, color, and width of the line. And to the right, the preview pane shows a view of the document with the selected borders. You can apply the border to the edges and shading to all the paragraph area by choosing the Paragraph option from the Apply To menu. Alternatively, you can apply the border or the shading to the text covering every line by selecting the text option. In the page border tab, you can choose a border for the entire current page, the first page or the entire document. Just select the desired option from the apply to scroll down menu. Inside this menu, you will find some options to choose from to apply the border to the entire document or just a part of it. Moving on to the shading tab, you can choose a background color or style for your document from those present inside the scroll down menu style. Once you have selected your desired border and shading, click on OK to apply them. So there you have it with just a few clicks, you can now create and add a border and shading to your document. Remember, to make your document look more visually appealing, you can customize the borders and shading using different styles, colors, and widths. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget, we've got plenty more videos to come covering all aspects of ICDL plus word processing. From basic formatting to advanced techniques, we'll make sure you master the program like a pro. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Music